It's Liz Thompson. I'm the National Education Manager for Genome Canada. And uh, the video that we are recording this afternoon is um, for the holiday project number five, I believe it is. Um, and that is for Saturday, the 5th of December. We've been doing a series of holiday projects from the beginning of November, and we'll continue with those right through until just before Christmas, 19th of December. And uh, today's holiday project is showing how to embroider four uh, holiday napkins, lovely festive table linen, um, where you do four napkins in one hooping. Um, so that is what we're going to be doing today. But before I move to the machine and show you how we set up and uh, do the stitching, I wanted to cover a couple of things. Um, people always want to know what needles and thread and so on you're using. So here we go. The first thing that I want to point out is that I am using a Janome red tip needle in the machine. We like to use Janome red tip needles because they are a size 14 with a larger eye. And that means you get less thread breakage because the thread is not rubbing against the eye as it's going through the eye of the needle. It is also a sharp needle, which is what's needed if you are doing embroidery through um, your fabric and your stabilizer, and maybe also through other stitches, underlay and so on, other stitches that you've already stitched on your embroidery. So we do like red tip embroidery needles for our embroidery. I am also using a bobbin, which is uh, actually Janome bobbin thread, but I could have threaded it up with a wound a bobbin with the same thread that I have in the needle. And the thread that I have in the needle is actually a um, white polyester embroidery thread. The brand is Helos Iris which is um, a brand that we carry here in Canada, and you can purchase it through our Janome dealers. Um, it is a rather nice, shiny embroidery thread, and that's what I wanted for my project, which you'll see in a moment what that is. And then the other thing is that most of our uh, machines will come, embroidery machines, will come with two different bobbin cases. This one here is our red bobbin case, and it has got a little marking. Let me just find exactly where it is. There where my finger is, is a little marking. It's really hard to see it, but it is red. And that tells you that that is the standard bobbin case for most of your sewing on your machine. But um, they also give us a yellow dot bobbin case, and you can very easily see that yellow dot there. Um, that is an embroidery bobbin case. What we mean by that is that the tension of this bobbin case is higher than the tension on the other one with the red marking. And that, that is what you want when you are doing embroidery because uh, you want um, the bobbin thread to stay down behind the fabric. Um, you don't want your bobbin threads creeping up onto the top of your fabric, and uh, that can kind of ruin an embroidery design. You really don't want that. So with that higher bobbin tension, what it does is it pulls the needle thread a little bit down to the back of the embroidery, and uh, the bobbin threads kind of stay where they should be on the back. Um, okay, so uh, that is what we've got going on there. Um, I'm also going to show you the uh, stabilizer that I'm using. Um, and I'm holding up here a uh, Madeira starter set of stabilizers. This is available also through our Janome dealers. This starter set is a wonderful way to get going with stabilizers. This package contains 12 different um, embroidery, uh, different stabilizers. And it gives you the opportunity to get to try out various different stabilizers before you commit to buying a whole roll of stabilizer. The one I'm using today is the Avalon Plus. Um, I needed a water soluble stabilizer because I really didn't want to be having to pick out a tear away stabilizer from behind my embroidery. That really would have annoyed me it, to be sitting there for hours with a pair of tweez tweezers picking that out. Whereas when I'm using a water soluble stabilizer, I can just spritz it afterwards and most of it will come away or I can um, rinse it in a sink of water. And so, as I say, that is our starter set, which is a good way to begin. 
um, and I have hooped up with the Avalon Plus stabilizer. So without any further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch us over to the camera on the machine and I'm going to show you how we set the machine up. All right, so this is our yellow dot bobbin case and I'm going to put that into the machine and then I'm going to put the needle plate onto the machine and then I'm going to remove the uh, bobbin cover and put the bobbin into the machine and cut it off. And then I am also, I have the machine threaded up with the um, uh, polyester embroidery thread and I am now going to uh, set my lock key and I'm going to thread my needle. All right, that is my automatic needle threader. And I just want to mention, do you see there's a little loop that forms behind the needle? You can pull that through if you want, but quite honestly, it really isn't necessary to do that because the machine will take that through to the back um, when you uh, start embroidering. Now, I'm hoping you can see this and I'm going to maybe move the camera a little bit away so that you can see. What I have done is I have hooped up the RE18 hoop, the RE Essential 18 hoop, and that hoop is an optional accessory hoop for the 15,000, but it is a very, very popular size. It's a little bit larger than a five by seven hoop. And um, having said that, and I'm just gonna put that down for the moment and show you some other hoops that you could use. This one is the um, SQ14 hoop, which is approximately four and a half by five inches. I'd have a little less working space in my hoop for four designs, but it is doable. And let me just put that aside and pick up another hoop. This one, um, and I probably will have to move the camera a little bit further away so that you can see it. This one is the SQ23 hoop, which is about nine inches uh, square, just over nine inches square. And that is a really nice size um, hoop to use because um, you've got plenty space to work with. Uh, not that you're gonna use all the space, but you won't get the cramped feeling. The next thing I want to show you is our um, adhesive, uh, artistic tack adhesive spray. And that is a temporary spray adhesive. And I'm going to spray that onto this water soluble stabilizer. And I'm not gonna do it right at the machine. So I'm gonna go off camera and just spray a little bit of that glue onto my stabilizer. And then what I've got is my fabric. So once again, I'm probably going to have to move the camera a little away so that you can see the bigger picture. And what I did here, was I got a piece of red fabric. It's a little bit more of a brick red fabric than this cherry red fabric here, but I've run out of the cherry red fabric. So we'll make do with this uh, brick red fabric. And um, you can cut your napkins pretty much whatever size you want. Um, but a good rule of thumb is um, if you look at these napkins here, let me hold this one up. This is what one of our finished napkins is gonna look like. That ended up being a rather small cocktail napkin because I was running out of that red fabric. But I had a little more of this uh, red fabric that you see now. And so what I did was I cut it across the width of the fabric and then uh, cut that down a little. If you happen to cut um, let's say 22 inches of fabric, the full width of the fabric, and then you cut that in half, each half that you've cut now will be one hooping and that will yield four napkins. So 22 inches of fabric will actually in two hoopings yield you eight napkins. What I have here, I've prepared it. I have taken my fabric, it's approximately 15 inches for each napkin, that's going to be pretty much the finished size. Let me move my camera again so that you can see it. That is going to be pretty much the finished size of my napkin, so a bit bigger than the one I showed you previously. And what I did was I took that big square of fabric and I folded it in half and pressed a very nice edge there or fold there. 
and then I folded it in half again and pressed again over here. So now I actually have four layers of fabric here. Now, let's go to the machine and the hoop and let's see what we do with the hoop. What we're going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to position my fabric on that little bit of glue that I sprayed onto the water soluble stabilizer. And before I continue with that, I wanted to point out what I marked on my stabilizer. I just used a Sharpie pen. All right, you could use a ball pen, you could use water soluble um, uh, fabric marker, but this is water soluble and it's going to rinse away later. So it really doesn't matter what pen you use. And I marked the vertical and the horizontal lines to match the little markings on my hoop so that this here in the middle is exactly the middle of my hoop. And what I'm going to do now is position my fabric and just smooth it down onto the glue. And then I'm going to open up my whole big square and press it down. And now, my fold press folded lines on my fabric should correspond underneath to that marking that I did with that green Sharpie marker. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to attach the machine, the, sorry, the hoop to the machine and um, position my fabric so that it is all nice and neat. Okay, but that isn't really quite enough. So we are going to base that fabric to the stabilizer to make sure that it doesn't move during our embroidery. All right, I happen to be working on the Janome 15,000. That is the embroidery machine that I have here at home. Um, if you do not have the Janome uh, 15,000, that really does not matter. Because if you have a hoop, even as small as a four by five uh, hoop, you can do this project. You obviously may need to use a slightly smaller design, but because you'll see in a moment where we're going to stitch, so long as you congregate your designs around the center of your hoop, you should be okay. So what I've done on my 15,000 is I have come to the red work category. So let me actually go back and show you where I went. This is what my... Um, machine looks like and I have gone to my selection for designs and then up in the top corner here I selected the um, little flower and I then went to select my work designs and so we are now back to what I was showing you a moment ago and the design that I want to choose to stitch today is design number four which is a snowflake now there is another snowflake number five but I chose number four so I'm going to select that and there it is on my screen. You'll see that it is telling me that it, it recommends the SQ14 hoop for that design. What we're going to do is we are going to go to the edit screen. So let me tip the camera slightly down so you can see how we do that. We're going to go to this little house, which is home, and I'm going to choose this icon here, which looks like a sheet of graph paper. And that now takes me to my edit screen. But remember, it's chosen the SQ14 hoop for this design, and I have got the uh, RE18 hoop on the machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here and we're going to scroll to the RE18 hoop, and I'm going to select that hoop. And then I'm going to move this design into this corner. But notice, it's a little big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this icon here and um, it gives me the opportunity to decrease the size of the design. So I'm going to reduce that design to 80% and say, okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that design up into the top corner. It probably should be a little smaller um, on my design here that I actually stitched out before, um, I used the SQ23 hoop and I was able to move the design a little away from the edges. So um, strictly speaking, I probably should have chosen a smaller design. 
Um, in fact, let's do that rather than fuss with a design that's a little too big. So let's go back to our house and go to the designs and let's scroll down um, and see, here is my little flower pot. So let's choose the little flower pot and I'm going to touch that design, the snowflake, and I'm going to delete it. And now in the middle of my uh, screen, I have the little flower pot and I'm just going to zoom in a little, hoping that you can see it a little bit better. Yep. And um, what I'm now going to do is I am going to rotate this design. And the icon for this looks a little bit like a whirlwind or a cyclone. You touch that icon and then down here, it gives you the option of rotating it by one or 45 degrees. I'm going to rotate it just once by 45 degrees and there is my little flower pot turned uh, slightly at an angle. I'm going to say okay at the bottom and now I get the opportunity to move my little flower pot a little bit on the screen. I actually quite like to use my jog keys. I find that more accurate than using my stylus pen when I really want to accurately position a design. So there I have my little flower pot. And of course, these would be Christmas poinsettia flowers. So it can, we can stay within the festive holiday uh, theme. But now I actually want this little pot of flowers to be in each quadrant of my uh, hoop because I want to stitch it out four times so that I have got, I end up with four napkins. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down to find this icon here, which is the one with four little hearts. And I want you to look at the screen and see what happens when I touch that. Is that not just super clever? It has now taken my little flower pot design and it has duplicated it another three times and positioned them all at lovely 45 degree angles because I wanted my flower pot to be sitting down in the corner of my napkin just like that. There is the little flower pot down in the corner of the napkin. Okay, so now what we will do is we will say okay, and then that now takes my design, that hoop confirmation telling me I'm working in the RE18 hoop is really good thing to have, because then I never will get myself into hot water by stitching into the side of a hoop. All right, over here, I like to use this little crosshair. So if I touch it, it goes black, which then adds this little crosshair to the screen. And that then gives me a really good idea of when I am embroidering, how, uh, what my progress is, where I am at in the embroidery design. But before I move you to the hoop, I want to show you something really cool at the top here. This icon here, it's, it looks like a square with little arrows going all the way around the square. This is our trace and based function. And uh, this is where you can decide, you can find out exactly where the design is going to stitch by uh, doing a trace, that's this one here. Or you can stitch this one, which is a single basting or that one, which is a double basting. We're going to choose the single basting today and it is then going to do a basting stitch all the way around the outside of my four flower pots that we just put together on the edit screen. What we're going to do next is, and this time I am going to pull that thread through. I don't know if you found, this is a really good tip. If you have ever found that you have done the basting with your embroidery machine and it goes along doing its basting, but it doesn't pick up the bobbin thread. It doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the machine. What it means is it wasn't able to pick up the bobbin thread satisfactorily, so it left it behind, and that's why it's really just going through the motions but not stitching. And the reason for that is that the basting stitch is a very long stitch and a very loose tension. So I like to give it a little bit of extra help. So what I do when I am going to start my basting is I come here to the stop start button, I hold my thread and I press that stop start button and it moves up to the top corner of, of the hoop where the designs are. 
And I, you'll notice that I stopped it and did not let it continue. The reason for that is, is that I want to now go to my needle up function, needle up down function, and I want to touch that and it drops the needle and then I press it again and I bring the bobbin thread up. So now I have both of my threads, my bobbin thread and my needle thread in my little hot hand. And this then means I can now touch my stop start button again. And it is now going to baste all the way around those flower pots. And you will notice that it is in fact basting and doing what we want it to do. I share this little tip because it will save you aggravation and annoyance if you you are stitching your basting and kind of nothing happens all right so it has now done its basting why did we baste well because all i have done is i have floated my red fabric on top of the uh, hoop i used a little bit of glue but sometimes that isn't quite enough to hold my fabric in place we don't want this fabric moving while we do our embroidery. I then switch the basting function off on the screen and I can now press my stop start button and it is going to start stitching my little flower pot uh, in the one quadrant. It will then obviously, once it has finished that particular uh, little flower pot, it is going to move to uh, the next uh, flower pot and continue on uh, for all four flower pots. Now, while it is stitching, I wanted to tell you a little bit about um, reversible embroidery. Now, you remember I said to you that we put a white thread in the bobbin and we have a white polyester embroidery thread in the needle. Now, if you are doing, let's say, a little Christmas bell or a little Christmas tree or something that has more than just one color, we only have one color in this design. Let's say, for argument's sake, you are doing a um, design and there are three colors in your design. What my recommendation, if you are going to be doing embroidery on a table napkin or a tablecloth, anything that can be turned over and your guests can look at the reverse side of your embroidery. You want the reverse side to be as pretty or as close to the top as the bottom. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to wind a bobbin with the same color that you're going to use three times in your needle. So let's say it was a green tree and a silver star and a yellow bauble on your tree. So you've got three colors. You're going to wind bobbins with those exact same colors. All right, and I am just going to stop the machine at this point just before it starts stitching the second flower pot because that is a really, really good tip. Obviously, if we had more than one color and the machine stopped for me to change to another color, what I at that point would need to do would I would need to uh, take the hoop off the machine and switch the bobbin color as well switch the bobbin it doesn't really take very long to do that and it's well worth the effort because when your guests turn the napkin over and look at the embroidery on the back they're not going to be thinking hmm she's not so very neat on the back of her work they're going to wonder which side is the right side because they're both going to look very similar all right, so I'm not actually going to spend time doing the entire design and have you just watch the design. Um, what I have here, and I'm going to move the camera once more so that you can see it, is I have stitched it out on a cream uh, fabric. And once again, these are smaller cocktail napkins. And I have my four flower pots already stitched out. There was my water soluble stabilizer, which has not been removed yet. So the very next step, once you have done all your embroideries, is you're obviously going to remove your basting. So um, you can just uh, snip the stitches on the back and then the, the whole basting comes out on the front very easily. And then you're probably going to want to wash away the stabilizer. You can do that first or you can cut your napkins first. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter what order you do them in. You will notice that I've got a very well pressed line here 
and a pressed line there. If you're concerned about maybe losing your pressed line, you can always use a wash away marker to uh, mark that before you did your embroidery, before you actually did your hooping. And so at this point, this is when I would take a bigger pair of scissors than this, or preferably my rotary cutter and ruler for a really nice sharp straight line. And you are going to cut along those fold lines all the way so that you end up with four separate napkins, each with a rather cute little flower pot in the corner. And then the only thing that remains to be done after that is if you hadn't already washed out the uh, stabilizer, then you would obviously go and wash the stabilizer out. And then you need to neaten the raw edges of your napkin. I chose to do a rolled hem on my serger simply because I find that so quick and so easy. And you will notice that I've got the little tails on the corners because I haven't as yet put fray check on the, those little tails and cut them off. And the reason for that is I cannot find my fray check. It is somewhere here in my sewing room, but I have been looking and looking and I haven't found it yet. So if I don't find it soon, I'm gonna have to go and buy another little bottle of fray check. So after that, after I've fray checked it, I will then cut those little tails off and I have a perfectly finished napkin. And I'm just going to hold it back here so that you can see the whole napkin. There it is with a, the snowflake stitched on the corner or the little flower pot as the case may be or whatever design you've chosen to stitch. Now, if I had not wanted to do a rolled hem, and I will tell you that I used our Madeira Aero Flock thread, which is a sort of slightly stretchy, fuzzy thread. I used that in my upper looper, and it really gives a beautiful uh, coverage to the edge, the raw edge of your fabric. And there will be no fuzzies or nasty little things poking through your, your um, stitching. If you choose not to do a rolled hem, possibly you don't have a serger, or you just want to do something different, you certainly can use our narrow hem foot, that's the D foot, um, and we have got several videos um, on uh, our uh, YouTube channel, the Janome Life YouTube channel, where we show that. Um, if you cast your eye back um, to our holiday project last week, that was on the 28th of November, there was an absolutely wonderful holiday project where one of our educators, Amanda, uh, made a Christmas cracker and she used a whole lot of techniques which I won't go into right now. You can watch the video and you can go to the Janome Life blog post for Saturday the 28th of November and one of the things she showed in the video was how to edge the edge of your napkin using that D foot narrow hem or rolled hem foot on your sewing machine and she has it down to a fine art so you might want to watch that video. Okay, so that is our lovely project for today. You could, those would make a wonderful set of table napkins for your um, holiday table. Um, and also, you could make it as a gift. Um, I'm sure any member of your family or friends would be very thrilled to receive a set of uh, table napkins. Of course, if you choose not to do a little flower pot or a snowflake, you could monogram. Uh, the table napkins. You could put a lovely little letter for the, the family surname. For mine, Thompson, I would put a little T in the corner. So there's lots and lots of different options of what you can do on your table napkins. I do hope you found this uh, little video informative. If you go below the video today, you will see um, that we have got a link back to the Janome Life blog post where I have shared all the information that I've talked about in the video today, like what needles we used and so on and so forth, thread, stabilizer and so on. There is a link back to the Janome Life blog post. Um, and also just to let you know, we have more projects coming up. Next week, we have um, another holiday project about how to do freestanding lace tree ornaments. So that's coming up. And then the last one, just before Christmas on the 19th of December, we will be doing, um, showing you how to make wired serger ribbon so that you've got something wonderfully individual and personalized 
to wrap up your, your uh, holiday gifts. Okay, thanks so much for watching and see you again soon. Thank you.